I love Kath, I relate to Kath, and just like Kath, I would die at the cornucopia immediately. Wow, this is such a, a weird, a weird setup, but like, Matilda versus Kaz Brecker. Who would win? <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to another video. Today we're gonna find out which one of these book characters would win in a Hunger Games. <laughs> I've seen a lot of these tier ranking videos going around. A lot of people have been tier ranking all of their favorite series. And at first I was planning on doing a video like that and I still wanna do a video like that in the future. But I thought, wouldn't it be fun if we made it Hunger Games themed? Because honestly, all I can think about is that new Hunger Games book that's gonna be coming out in a few weeks. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna emulate a Hunger Games with bookish characters. So I asked you guys on Twitter to send me some book characters and I picked the characters of books that I have actually read and also characters from first books in series as to avoid spoilers. And then on top of that I also added some of my own character picks until I had 24 book characters, just like the 24 tributes in The Hunger Games. So now we're just gonna see what would happen if we would just throw all these 24 book characters in a Hunger Games arena in the style of the first Hunger Games book. So with a lot of like forests and meadows and I'm gonna decide which ones would die first and which one would emerge the victor. And I'm going to judge them based on their combat skill. So whether they would actually be able to kill the other characters and second based on their survival skills. So whether they'd be able to actually you know, find food and not die of thirst or some kind of injury infection. So there's a large variety of characters here. Yes, I can see it's kind of unfair because we have some normal people in there and then some people with like super powerful magic, but I think that just makes it fun, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so the tiers that I created is the last one is dies at the cornucopia because then the one day survivor because I think most people actually die on the first day then we have the tier of the strong tributes the people who would probably live for a few days and be there for a while then we have the careers tier which is going to be the tier for all the people that are gonna still be there at the very end and then we have one <laughs> Victor. <laughs> so obviously this is just going to be completely based on my estimates, so if you have any different opinions or any different thoughts, just let me know in the comments. And now let's begin with ranking these characters. <laughs> so the first one that I have here, I couldn't find a picture for her, is Stevie Bell from the Truly Devious series. Well, I guess her power is that she's really good at detective skills, but other than that, I think we all know that she has absolutely no combat skills. Maybe she'd be able to survive, but I'm gonna be honest, I think this one's just going straight to dies at the cornucopia, because I could see her being so impulsive that she tries to run to the cornucopia to get like weapons and then she'd just be killed. Then <laughs> we have Reed from the Paper Princess series, which is that romance series that I really don't like. <laughs> and I couldn't find a better picture for him than this one, which I guess says enough. But honestly, again, wow, we're off to a great start here, but he is just this really broody rich boy who's kind of an asshole, but you know, he's the main love interest because he's super sexy. And honestly, I think he is so much of just like a rich dude that he would not be able to survive. Like he's strong, so he would probably be able to maybe fight off some really strong people, but he would not be able to survive because he, is just used to the rich life. So he would just die, not necessarily at the cornucopia, but he would just like die within the first day, I think. Then we have Ron Weasley from Harry Potter. And this one's interesting because now we have our first non-muggle character. He has magic, which means that he can do a lot of things. If you have a wand, you can just conjure so many things. You could just Akio some weapons from the cornucopia. You could. Technically, just Avada Kedavra everyone, but I don't think Ron would do that. But he is going to be a very strong tribute. I'm very sure of that. Then the next one is Inan from the Children of Blood and Bone trilogy. I've only read the first book, but he is our villain character. But he does have magic. Uh, his magic is that he can see people's dreams. He can enter people's dreams, which is honestly quite unuseful in the Hunger Games, I'd say. He is a very strong fighter, but I don't think he's stronger necessarily than all these other characters to the point that he would be a career. And the fact that his magic is kind of unuseful, I think he would just be a strong, a strong tribute. Would he be stronger than Ron? I don't think so, because again, 
he cannot compete with Ron's magic, so I'm gonna put him here. Then we have Cinder from the Lunar Chronicles, our feisty little girl. She has a cyborg hand and foot, which I think makes her slightly stronger than the average human. But other than that, it's been a while since I read the Lunar Chronicles, but I don't think she has any remarkable fighting skills. I have to admit, there's a part of me that could see her being impulsive, running at the cornucopia and then just dying. <laughs> I love Cinder, just to be clear. I really like her, but um, I think she'd maybe survive one day and then just very quickly be defeated by everyone else. Then we have Daisy Jones from Daisy Jones and the Six. Although I loved her as a character, let's be honest, I mean, maybe she could sing and gain some, gain some money from the sponsors, but other than that, I, sh I think she would instantly die. I'm sorry, Daisy. Same thing goes for Kat from Fangirl. I love Kath, I relate to Kath, and just like Kath, I would die at the Cornucopia immediately, and I think she would be worse than all these others. Oh, I forgot to say who is better. I think Daisy Jones would be a little more feisty than Stevie Bell, maybe just because she's more of an adult, so I'm just gonna put her here. But Kath would be, she'd be the weakest. Then we have a very, very strong character, Selena Sardothian from the Throne of Glass series. She is extremely strong. We all know Adarlan's most, most notorious assassin and she only gets stronger throughout her entire uh, Throne of Glass series. In my opinion, I would even say she's kind of overpowered because I remember when I was reading Throne of Glass, I almost didn't really enjoy the action scenes because Selena was so powerful that she could just beat everyone that it was kind of boring to me. Um, but she's definitely gonna be in the careers tier. The victor is gonna be chosen at the very end because of course I don't know yet who's gonna be the victor and there can only be one. But she is extremely strong. She would kill everyone definitely just immediately at the careers. Then we have an old school one. I'm really glad someone suggested her on Twitter and that is Penryn from the Penryn and the End of Days trilogy which starts with Angel Fall. One of my favorite favorite trilogies for the longest time. Angel Fall was one of my favorite books for the longest time so I have a lot of nostalgia. She is kind of your typical typical YA dystopian main character where she's really good at fighting. She gets a sword at one point so she could really handle her weapons. She has wits, she's smart, she knows how to fight. She's doing pretty well, definitely better than these two, I think. But um, I don't know if she would survive longer than one day. She doesn't have any magic which really makes it difficult for her so I'm gonna put her at a one day survivor but definitely at the top for now. Then someone suggested Matilda, which is honestly, I love that. So Matilda from the book by Roald Dahl is of course just a little girl and that's actually really sad but the thing is she has telekinesis and I think that's extremely useful in the Hunger Games because she could just, she doesn't have to run towards the cornucopia, she can just use her telekinesis to steal from people while they're sleeping. She's small so probably maybe quite stealthy, and she could just get anything she wants by just having it fly over to her. She can make things combust from a distance. By the way, I'm going off the movie, I haven't actually read the book, so it might be different in the book. But I think she would actually be a surprisingly strong tribute, and I think she would win from Inan, just because I think Inan is just really dumb and he would be led astray by his emotions. He would probably fall in love with some of the other tributes and then just forget everything. <laughs> Would she win from Ron? I think she would outsmart him. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put Matilda in like a very strong tribute, but she would not hold up against someone like Selena Sargothian. Okay, then we have Darlington, the uh, male character, male main character in Ninth House. The thing about Darlington is that we don't really know what his skills are and what his powers are yet. We know he's just a normal human, but he dabbles a little bit in magic. And honestly, from what we know, his strongest points is definitely just his intellect and his wits and that he's just like a really good student. But I don't think it's gonna help him in the Hunger Games. And I actually think he would die quite fast. He is also like a rich boy. He would not be able to survive in the woods. So I think he would just, he would, yeah, he would definitely be one of those people who would maybe 
be smart enough to not run towards the cornucopia and just get away but he would definitely die after the first day. He would not be able to beat Penryn because Penryn is like an actual good fighter. So there he goes. Then we have one of my favorite characters, Elias from An Ember in the Ashes. A killing machine, that's for sure. Honestly, An Ember in the Ashes, I gave that book three stars, but I'm the more that I think about it, I might actually want to continue the series just because I love Elias so much. Just his personality arc is so beautiful in that book, but let's just go back to his skills. He is trained since he was like a little kid to be one of the masks, so one of the most powerful warriors in the land. He can kill anyone if he wants to. So just power-wise and probably also survival skills-wise, he would definitely be up there with the careers. But the thing with Elias, and this might be like a slight spoiler for an Ember in the Ashes, just like slightly, uh, is that one of his problems is that he's really grappling with his morality and he doesn't want to kill. So I feel like that would really get in his way in the Hunger Games. So he would definitely be able to survive for a long time, but I think the problem is that he would not be able to kill anyone. So because of that, I think he would never really go into the career tier. That's my take on him. So then we have a very special character, and that is Ebony Darkness Dementia Raven Way, which, if you don't know, is the main character from the famous Harry Potter fanfiction My Immortal. It's kind of seen as the worst fanfiction of all time. It has like a, it's terribly written, and Ebony Darkness Dementia Raven Way is like the most Mary Sue character you will ever find. It's so much fun to read, I highly recommend, just you can find it on, I think, maybe fanfiction. Net. It even counts towards your Goodreads goal because it's on Goodreads, so highly recommend that one. But the thing about Ebony Darkness Dementia Raven Way is that she's a Mary Sue, so she is overpowered AF. <laughs> she can do anything, kind of like Selena Sardothian, actually. Technically speaking, if we follow the logic of the fanfiction, she would be able to kill everyone. You know, if you follow the logic of the fanfiction, she would probably be the winner and kill everyone. But if we're just gonna look at her personality-wise, she would be just so occupied with calling everyone a prep and a poser and she would hate everyone so much that she would probably just get caught up in her own vanity and her own arrogance that people would just like bend up to kill her, I think. Everyone would hate her so much that they would all work together just to kill Ebony. So, <laughs> so yeah, let me know where you would put her because I'm having a hard time placing her. But then someone uh, suggested Gail from The Hunger Games, which is very interesting. I think Gail is very similar to Katniss, just in terms of strength and survival skills. He would definitely be able to survive for a very long time. He knows how to fight. He, I think he also knows how to use a bow, just not as well as Katniss Everdeen. And Katniss had definitely had the um, the advantage of having a bow that she could use to actually kill people, whereas Gil was mostly good at setting snares, which is, you know, nice if you want to survive in the Hunger Games, but you can't really kill anyone with it, unless you, unless you set snares for humans. Maybe that's what he'd do? I don't know, but at the same time, setting snares would let other people know that you're close by, so that could also be a disadvantage. So I think he'd survive for quite a long time, but he's he's definitely a little more kind of impulsive and arrogant than Katniss, so I don't think he would lay low as long as she did. So he would be a strong tribute. Maybe he'd win from Inan, um, but that's it. Also, he doesn't have any magic, so that immediately just drops him down a bit. Actually, no, he would not win from like all these magical people. I'm gonna put him in like a one day survivor. He would do well in the Hunger Games, like in the Hunger Games universe itself, but just with all these magical, strong characters, he wouldn't do very well. So I think he'd win from Penryn, just because he would have better survival skills than her. Um, but he's still gonna be in the one day survivor tier. All right, then we have interesting, interesting Kaz Brecker. So this one's kind of hard because again, with this character, all his power mostly comes from his sleight of hand and his like lockpicking and stuff, which is all stuff that you have no use for in the Hunger Games. Absolutely no use. Like he needs to be able to find the right food and survive. And I don't know, 
if he'd necessarily be capable of that. He is good at hand-to-hand -hand combat, which comes in handy in the Hunger Games, especially with his, like, Fabricator fortified cane. He would do some really good fighting. And we also know that Kaz Brecker is just a genius, so he would probably come up with some fantastic plans to outsmart all the people, even though he doesn't have magic himself. I mean, we see him in Six of Crows doing really well in this world where a lot of people actually have magic. So I think he'd do very well, but he's not a career because, again, he's good at hand-to-hand -hand combat, but, you know, he's not gonna fight win from Elias. He's not... well, hmm. Would he be able to stand up against Ron? Again, it's just magic is such a difficult one because if you're just a normal human, you can't really do a lot against magic. But then again, he's so smart. I also said that Matilda would outsmart these people. So if Matilda can do it, I think Kaz can do it as well. And then... <laughs> wow, this is such a, a weird... <laughs> a weird setup, but like... Matilda versus Kaz Brecker. Who would win? <laughs> I mean, they're both really smart, but Matilda's too good. She's too good, but she does have telekinesis, but I think... I think Kaz Brecker would not hesitate to kill a child, let's be honest, okay? But he would not win from Elias. Okay, let's put him there. <laughs> we have Luna Lovegood, another magic wielder. Just because of her magic, I think she would be able to outlive all of these people. She would be a very strong tribute. Mm, would she be better than Rom? That's the question. I have to admit I am not too knowledgeable on just how strong their magic is. I don't know if Luna Lovegood is like stronger than Ron, but I think Luna Lovegood has the disadvantage of just being a little naive and just way too good. So I'm gonna put her in the one day survivor as well, but at the top because of her magic. Um, because I do have to think about the fact that most people in the Hunger Games die within the first day. So most of the people should be like in the bottom two tiers. <laughs> we have Nina Zenik, which honestly, she is just like Selena, very overpowered because Nina is a heart render. Her power is that she can control the human body. She could literally just go snap and you would drop dead. She could make your heart explode just like that. And even the thing is, you can't sneak up on her, you can't hide from her because she can sense your heartbeats. So honestly, I don't think anyone could go up against Nina. I mean, maybe she would have trouble surviving in the woods and like finding food and things like that. But <laughs> let's all be honest, like, Nina could just kill everyone in one day. And Selena, although she's a super strong assassin, she doesn't have the advantage of stealth against Nina because Nina can just sense her heartbeat. So Nina, for now, is like definitely just the strongest one here. There's no way anyone can go up against her, I think. Then we have our sweet, sweet Dorian Gray. So I was very tempted to say, oh, he's just a naive little boy. He would die to cornucopia, but hear me out, okay? Dorian Gray is extremely charismatic and he would win over all those sponsors. He would get all the money from the sponsors. So that would definitely give him a strong advantage. And if he's pushed, if you've read the picture of Dorian Gray, you know what he's capable of. Oh um, yeah, if you don't know how to fight, you can have all the help from all the sponsors, but it's not really gonna help you. Yeah, <laughs> I think he's just gonna be a one day survivor anyway. I'm, I'm just gonna put him here. Okay, we have a lot of strong people coming up here now. So we have Triss Pryor, which is the main character of Divergent, and in my opinion, she is very similar to Katniss, just because they come from such similar books. But she knows how to fight. I'm pretty sure she knows how to survive, not as much as Katniss would, but she is definitely a strong tribute. I think she would be able to go up against Inan just because she has that little bit more of a gritty fighting experience, which I think is very just more useful in the Hunger Games, but she she would stand, she would not be able to stand against Ron's magic, unfortunately, but she would be a strong tribute nevertheless. Then we have a very interesting one, Zelly from the Children of Blood and Bone. She's the main character and her magical abilities are that she can raise people from the dead, which when I think about it is extremely useful in the Hunger Games, as in the more people that die during the Hunger Games, the stronger Zelly gets. It doesn't matter that their bodies are taken away, I think, because she just summons 
their souls. So the further on in the Hunger Games, the more people Zelly has by her side, because she could... Oh, this is, that's so effed up. But she can just summon all the all the other dead tributes and have them fight for her as ghosts. Maybe just with that amount of magic she could win from Selena Sardothian without magic. Um, Selena Sardothian is just difficult because she progresses in power so much throughout the series and I've only read up until the third book and there are like eight books. So I don't know what Selena Sardothian is going to be like further into the series, but from where I've read, where she doesn't really have any magic, I think Zally would actually win. But again, <laughs> she's going to run against a wall with Nina, who would just snap and she's dead. So now, up next, we have Victor Vale, the main character from Vicious, and his superpower is that he can change pain. So he can inflict pain and he can dampen pain, he can dampen his own pain, which I think is very useful in the Hunger Games. Uh, he doesn't necessarily have great combat skills, but just like the power of inflicting pain on someone can render someone just stunned and it could even kill someone if they're already weakened. So I think we should not underestimate the power that Victor Vale has and just the fact that he can, you know, really dampen his own pain, which is also very useful in the Hunger Games, where you're probably going to be in pain a lot. Would he be able to win from Selena? That's the question, because Selena is obviously the better, the better fighter, but even Selena, she's just in a lot of pain. It doesn't really matter. The same goes for Zelly. Would he be able to win from Nina? <laughs> Again, um, although he would be able to inflict pain real quickly, Nina would be able to have him drop that real quickly. And the thing about Nina is that she can actually sense him from afar. So, oh, wait, no, I just realized Victor Vil can also sense people from afar. He can sense people's bodies. So that immediately just gives him the same advantage as Nina does. I think those two have the advantage just because they're able to sense other people so no one can hide from them, which is honestly amazing in the Hunger Games, because you need to be able to hide from people. That's like the only chance you have to sometimes kill someone, is to hide. But you can't hide from Victor or Nina. So that's why they're up here. But I think, I still think Nina would win. Then we have an interesting one, and that is Alina Starkov from the Grisha trilogy, who is supposedly the, one of the strongest Grisha, so magicians, in the world because she is the Sun Summoner and she's the only Sun Summoner that has ever known to be. She's the only person that has light magic. But as far as I remember from the series, she doesn't really know how to fight. And light magic, Sun Summoner magic, is only useful against the dark, against dark magic. And no one here is really using dark magic. So I'm genuinely worried for her. I don't think her and her light power is really gonna save her in the Hunger Games. It's definitely not the same as the magic that these other people have, so I actually think she's gonna die rather quickly because she just, there's no use to her power. Like maybe she could like blind people, so she would definitely maybe be able to go against these other people that don't know how to fight, but as soon as she just meets Penryn, the first person who does know how to fight. Yeah, I think Penryn's gonna win. So I'm gonna put here, down here. Okay, we have two left, guys. <laughs> the next one is Kel from A Darker Shade of Magic. So Kel is an Antari, which is a blood ma magician, which is one of the most powerful magicians in just the entire magical land of A Darker Shade of Magic. So out of all of these magicians, I think he would just be one of the most powerful. Um, I'm kind of worried about just like Harry Potter magic because Harry Potter magic is such a soft magic system that you can do basically everything. But then again, Kel is just extremely powerful. So I think he'd definitely be in the careers. Okay, so I thought about it and I think Selena would definitely win from Sally. I don't know <laughs> why I put her beneath there, but it's just that Zelly is definitely way too inexperienced yet, and Selena is like a lifelong of assassin training. And I think Kel would also win from Zelly just because of that, just because he's so much more experienced in combat than she is. But I don't think he would win from Selena, just because although he's like the most powerful magician in his universe, 
the magic system is rather limited so if you like expand that to all the other universes he's not that powerful like he's not as powerful as an assassin that can also use magic so I'm gonna put him here but I do think that these are definitely the most powerful and then the last one we have Bella Swan so I'm using Bella Swan from like the end of the Twilight uh, Saga so when she's already a vampire and the thing is I know Bella Swan is supposed to be like really weak but she's a vampire and that means that she's the only one out of all of these people that has super strength and super speed which is extremely useful here in combat and just in the arena in the Hunger Games and another advantage that she has so I'm definitely gonna put her here in the careers but the other advantage advantage that she has is that she doesn't need to eat or drink so while the other people are all slowly going to be weakened because they're not eating well they're not drinking well it doesn't matter for her because she's a vampire so every time she kills someone and she drinks their blood she regains her strength so I think already that's gonna put her like way up here and here's the thing you know how like Nina and Victor had the advantage because they could sense other people's presence? They can't sense Bella Swan's presence because she's a vampire. She doesn't have a heart. She doesn't have a working body. So honestly, by the way, now that I think of it, Nina's powers would not work on Bella Swan. Okay, they just wouldn't work. I genuinely wonder if any of these people's powers would work on her just because she's not a human. The only thing... Also, she's immortal. Selena could chop her up into bits, but it doesn't matter. The only thing that could kill her is being chopped up into bits and then fire. So maybe Kel would have a chance because he... There are Antari spells that can, like, create fire. But then again, Bella is so fast and strong and a vampire. I actually think that she's stronger than all of these and she's the only one out of all of these people that could realistically beat Nina because Nina's powers that could kill anyone else are rendered useless against Bella. So... <laughs> I think Bella Swan's gonna be the victor in the Hunger Games. I'm sorry, I don't make the rules. It's just... <laughs> wow, okay. <laughs> I think this is just this is just what's meant to happen you know we now have midnight sun coming out in august the twilight craze is coming back again and just to celebrate that i think we all need to acknowledge how powerful bella swan is and how she would definitely kill everyone and win the hunger games all right so this is the end results this is the tier rank that i came up with Definitely let me know what you think of this, if you would change anything else. Who do you think should win? Do you agree that Bella Swan would win or do you think I'm completely crazy for coming to that conclusion? Let me know in the comments <laughs> and let me know if you like these kind of tier ranking videos. I'm definitely gonna make another one where I rank all of the series that I've ever read. And yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this kind of different kind of video and I will see you soon in another video. Goodbye!